Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Raj Dandekar. I graduated with a PhD from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And uh, since then, I'm one of the three co-founders of Vijuara AI Labs. I am incredibly excited today to share this video with all of you. I have not prepared for this video too much because the announcement which I am sharing with you happened overnight. Today I got up around 7 a.m. Indian time and uh, I went to LinkedIn as always and I saw this post that OpenAI GPT OSS is now the number one trending model on Hugging Face out of almost 2 million open models. I was waiting for this moment for almost two months, but I never thought this would happen. Um, and that moment is the expectation that OpenAI would release their open source model one day. That's a huge moment for everyone in the AI community because the community split into open source and closed source, right? And OpenAI is the pioneer of the closed source modeling community where uh, they did release one model in an open source way, which was GPT-2. So if you look at this OpenAI GPT-2, that was an open weights model, but that was six years ago. After that, they have not made anything open source. And uh, their models are top notch. Their models are always state of the art, right? So when they launched GPT OSS, it's a huge thing for the AI community because OpenAI suddenly now at the intersection of closed source models and open source models. And as soon as they launched their open source model, it's shot up to uh, number one out of almost two, mini, two million open models. That's the excitement around this model. In fact, whenever OpenAI releases something new, there is always excitement. But this is, this is something extraordinary because it's an open weights model. And I'm making this video literally three hours after I saw the announcement. But within those three hours, I've done a number of things which I'm going to share with all of you right now. So first thing I did, I went to their documentation and I saw what these models are. Okay, so they are 120 billion model. That's the large model. And they also have a 20 billion model. Relatively smallish models. And they call these as reasoning models. But they also mentioned that uh, they can handle, these models can handle agentic workflows as well. I have not tested their reasoning capabilities and I have not tested their agentic capabilities yet, which I'll continue to do so. Uh, but let me explain what I have tested among these two models as of now. So once I saw this announcement, I naturally wanted to run these models on my machine and I wanted to really get these open source models working for myself because mostly earlier I had been working with Gwen models or Llama models. Uh, I never thought I would be running a open source open AI model. So yeah, I did not want to make this video before actually running something. So then I went to Hugging Face and uh, they had already re released an article on Welcome GPT OSS, the new open source model family from OpenAI. And they had actually given some instructions on how we can go ahead and use these models. Here I got to learn some more things about these models. They have a 4-bit quantization scheme which uses the MXFP4 format. And uh, these are only applied in the mixture of experts weights. So both of these are mixture of experts models. Uh, they have uh, Swigloo activation functions and uh, they use rotary positional encodings, which is now standard. No one uses the sinusoidal positional encodings or absolute positional encodings anymore. And then I immediately wanted to try to run inference using these models. Um, so they had two sections on inference. First is API access through normal inference providers. And second is uh, local inference. So let's do this. What I did after that point is I went to run pod. I had around $20 in my account. So I went to run pod and what I did is I went to pods and I deployed one server and uh, I used one H100 NVL GPU, which I selected over here. And let me give it the name GPT OSS inference. 
and uh, I switched to PyTorch 2.4.0 and then I just added the disk space over here. The model does not need this much disk space, but let's see. So while the pod is spinning up, let me tell you some more about this model. Um, yeah. So essentially, if you directly load the model, right, it takes around 40 gigabytes of space, I think around 48 gigabytes in the B float 16 version. It does you to run the quantized version, you need uh, PyTorch, which is 2.8 and you need Triton 3.4. But I did not have all these latest versions. So whenever I ran the models, by default, they ran using the B float 16. So the pod is spinning up right now, as you can see, but I'll show you the final code. Yeah. So the first is API access through hugging face inference providers. And uh, here we are using the Cerebras provider. So hugging face has actually partnered with several inference providers and Cerebras is one of them. So what I'm doing over here is, yeah, I'm mentioning the hugging face token here which let me uh, I can also hide it but that's fine and uh, I'm just asking a question how many R's are in the world strawberry remember I'm not downloading the model over here I'm just using API so then I run this and you'll see that the world strawberry contains three R's I can ask any question that uh, give me a short code to uh, find the smallest prime number less than 100 and then I run this yeah so then you see the code it's blazingly fast inference right that's the first way the second thing is the second way to access inference through API is using something called as the responses API um, yeah so this is open as advanced interface for generating model responses which looks uh, it's very intuitive for the user. For example, if you just look at this, right, if you look at the instructions here, I have to mention the role, I have to mention the content, etc. But through the responses API, you can just do input. That's it, as if you're interacting in a chat window. And here I'm using Fireworks AI as the inference provider. First, I showed you Cerebras, right? We can also use Fireworks AI. Um, and then let me run this. Again, you will see that uh, the code has been printed over here. Uh, I think I need to restart this so that the same output is not printed. So I've restarted the kernel right now. And let me now print out this second. So now, now I'm asking how many R's are in strawberry HF token is not defined. All right. I think I'll need to define the hf token over here name completion is not defined All right i think i need to import these let's see i think i need to install some dependencies over here Yeah, so I'm printing the response over here and it says that there are three R's in the word strawberry. So that's using the response API of chat GPT. Then I wanted to do what I wanted to do after this point is something called as a local inference where I want to really download the model on my GPU. And remember, I'm using H100 at the moment and then I want to query the model. So let's see how this goes. I'll first install these packages and then what I'll do is that I'll just say that this is the model which I'm using OpenAI GPT OSS 20 billion 
and the question is how many hours are in the word strawberry uh so let me run inference on this model at the moment so here you see mx fp4 quantization requires triton version greater than or equal to 3.4 which is not there so it's defaulting to the dequantized uh, b float 16 version but you immediately get the answer the user asks how many r's are in the word strawberry they likely refer to the letter r count in the word strawberry so you see the reasoning trace or the thinking trace since it's a reasoning model essentially and the word strawberry contains the letters so this is the reasoning and then the answer is uh, there are three r's right so positions three eight and nine all right so this is local inference using the hugging face transformers library but i wanted to use vllm also for this so let's let's actually try to do that um, i installed vllm and then i just load the model here but you'll see that i run into an error um yeah this is the main error which shows that uh, this kind of quantization is not supported by vllm and this error is live at the moment it's being tracked at this issues on the vllm uh, repository so if you actually take a look at the vllm yeah this is so this is the main issue right now and this is live at the moment as of 10 am ist on 6th of august you can actually take a look at this issue and see if you want to contribute to this community by solving this but i hope this is fixed so that i can soon start running vllm after this point what i did is i wanted to run an application on uh, text classification so what i did was i uh, had this data set which is essentially uh, the rotten tomatoes data set on hugging face this one yeah so essentially they have a list of movie reviews and they are labeled as positive or negative movie reviews and i wanted to use gpt oss to do this classification for me let's see so i just gave a prompt that you are a sentiment analysis assistant is the following movie review positive or negative and then i loaded the whole data set uh, i loaded the same model over here open ai gpt oss uh, and then i ran a simple classification code and an evaluation code which essentially prints the confusion matrix and i had some sample evaluations over here so let's see i did not expect the model to do that well at sentiment analysis but uh, let, let's see the results uh, yeah you see so here the inference actually does take a bit of time um, it takes around uh, three minutes for the inference to run so we'll just wait for this much time and then we'll come back to check the results as you can see we are ready with the results here and we obtained uh, an f1 score of 0.67 and uh, we obtained a uh, accuracy of 0.51 which is not very good uh, and these are the results with uh, some sample reviews so you can see that the model does make mistakes i actually tested this again with gwen 32 billion and i got similar results then what i want to do after this point is i wanted to fine tune this model and i saw that openai had already released a cookbook sort of of fine tuning with gpt oss and hugging face transformers so what i did after this point is i made one more notebook called fine tune gpt oss i loaded this data set which the openai folks recommended it's essentially a multilingual thinking data set uh, where uh, you can show the reasoning traces in different languages. So the whole idea is that this uh, data set, if you see, it's a reasoning data set where the chain of thought has been translated into several languages such as French, Spanish and German. So if you use the OpenAI GPT OSS by default, it will generate the reasoning traces in English. So the goal is to fine tune this model on this multilingual thinking data set so that it can think in a specific language. So here you can see I loaded the data set over here. So let me take you actually through this entire thing. I first installed the TRL PEFT transformers libraries, loaded the data set over here. 
loaded the tokenizer over here and uh, uh, here is where I defined the PEFT configurations and the training parameters. It's actually a very simple script to run the fine tuning. I'm deliberately not going into that much detail. And then I finally ran the training script for I think around 63 iterations, one epoch. So that took around 20 minutes on my H100. And then I pushed my model to uh, my hugging face. So Vijuara AI multilingual thinking. So I pushed this fine tuned GPT OSS on hugging face. So earlier, if you see without fine tuning, uh, if I ask some question, yeah, if I ask some questions, you will see that the reasoning here happens in English and the responses are in uh, French. But I want my reasoning also to be in uh, that particular language right now. I'll actually show you one more example here. Yeah, so if I ask this question, you'll see that the reasoning here is happening in uh, English, right? That's not a good thing. I want the reasoning to be in that specific language. So let's see the response after we fine tune. So I fine tune my, my model here and then do inference with my fine tune model. And the responses which I obtain are this. So first I uh, use the reasoning model as German. And then you can see here that uh, the reasoning or the thinking is also in the German language. Then I switch to Chinese. You'll see that the reasoning or thinking is also in Chinese language. I also tried to switch the reasoning language to Hindi actually, but uh, this did not work for me for some reason, at least when I tried it earlier. Uh, but let's see whether it uh, whether it uh, works at the moment. Yeah, so as you can see here, I did not get good results for Hindi. Let me try French at the moment. I got good results for German. I got good results for uh, Chinese. Let's see for French. Yeah, I think for French also it seems to work. But the whole idea which I want to mention here is that it's actually very simple to fine tune the GPT OSS model on whatever you want because it's only this this training configuration really. The other prompts which I've made is just to test whether the model is working or not. That's why the code appears long, but it's very simple to fine tune this model. So all of these updates are made within the last two to three hours. That's why this video does not go in a lot more depth. I'll continue exploring this open source model for more um, industrial based applications and I'll keep providing more uh, and more in depth tutorials. I also want to explore the architecture of this open source model and build this open source model fully from scratch. Let's see all of that is in the plan. But first, I just wanted to implement this. I will share all these code files with all of you so that all of you can get started uh, working with this open source model. I think it's a very big day for the AI community and we ought to celebrate because open AI does seem to be open finally. Thanks everyone and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.